a lot of reasons, uh, a, lot of, a lot of reasons why those speeches didn't uh, actually occur. Uh, a lot of the blame rests on the schools, uh, well, the school, the uh, police and security, um, with the speakers themselves, and especially with these sort of militant organizations. And it's a huge lost opportunity for the students and the school itself that we haven't had the opportunity to have these speakers give their opinions so that we can debate them. Well, so the first event with Milo was definitely only about, you know, having a speaker come and then challenge the uh, liberal, uh, liberal um, ideology on campus. That was, that was the only thing. We were not thinking about like, oh yeah, we're going to sue. You know, we were so not prepared for the violent protests that happened out there. Once we invited Ann Coulter and she said yes, we had already gone to the press and we were telling them that this is a second chance. This is as well as being a... Um, another uh, talk for a controversial speaker to come and talk on a liberal campus. It is also a second chance for Berkeley and its students and fa uh, administration. This used to be the capital of free speech. I don't know what happened, but we lost that vision and we are coming back and we are figuring out what's happening and we are taking stand. And we are I wouldn't say that it's a new era for this, the free speech movement. I would say it's a very contentious point in, I guess you could say the continuum of the free speech movement. I see us sort of more at like a crossroads right now. Um, you know, we're in a more tumultuous political time in America's history. Obviously, one could say that for sure. Putting a heavy strain on free speech, especially on this, insti uh, on this institution in particular. So it's up to Berkeley to sort of unite, I would say, and defend free speech.